Okay, welcome and thank you for joining us tonight as we move into the design phase of the West Park Skate Park Expansion Project. I'm Stacy Zarzua, the Parks Manager with the City of Ventura. Some may remember me from the seven public meetings we conducted in 2019 and 2020 as we gained community feedback and insight into what elements you would like to up, you would like upgraded at the current skate park. We were not awarded the grant on our first submittal, but we reapplied and the city received a $2 million grant in 2022 from the statewide park development and community revitalization program. So that's why we're here tonight. City conducted a competitive request for a proposal process, and on January 23rd, council approved a contract with Grindline, who's here tonight, uh, skate parks to design and construct the West Park Skate Park Expansion Project. This is the city's first. Am I still on? Yeah. This is the city's first ever design-build contract, and will increase the skate park footprint to approximately 20,000 square feet. Yay! <laughs> Here tonight, we have Pacific Coast Land Design, Eric Berg and Brianne Alton in the back, who were critical to the RFP process and will share what the process entailed and how they are partnering with the city as we move through the design build phase. Travis Gonzalez, uh, our city civil engineer, is here with us and will be able to assist with questions regarding the design build process. I also wanted to recognize our Parks and Recreation Commissioners here with us tonight. We have Chair Don Wood with us, and then we also have Commissioner Kathy Bremer as well, and I think, am I missing anybody? And then, uh, most importantly, we have Grindline Skate Park is here to present and receive your input on the project. They have been operating for over 20 years and are based in Seattle, Washington. They have designed and constructed over 300 successful skate park projects, both nationally and internationally. Regional examples of their work include skate parks in Anaheim, Bakersfield, Oceanside, and San Diego. To start us off, uh, please welcome Eric Berg with PCLD. Thanks, Stacy. Just to give you a, a little bit of an overview of what we're going to talk tonight, I'm going to try and get out of the way as fast as I can. Um, I don't want to get in the way of Matt. He's got an amazing presentation for you this evening. Um, I just want to give you a little bit of background of how we got here tonight um, as briefly as I can. Then Matt's going to take it away from there. So this is just a little bit of the way we're structured. At the end of the evening, we're going to break out. We've got three little stations here that we're going to break out. We want to get your comments on things. There's sticky notes. There's ways to interact. There'll be people there to kind of receive your feedback. Um, I'm joined here tonight by my team. Brianne was mentioned in the back, but I've got Tori and Eddie and Chris are here. So PCLD is here in force to help any way we can as well. A little bit about the project, as was mentioned. I'd put this up here to kind of graphically display the way this is organized because it's a little bit different. But um, the heart of this project is the city of Ventura. They're the applicants of the grant that you guys um, just heard about, the sta statewide park program grant. Um, we at Pacific Coast Land Design, landscape architects here in Ventura, we helped design Kellogg Park over on the avenue. Um, we helped the city in the grant application process that was ultimately awarded, but this is a design build project. Skate park, we're landscape architects, we're not, land, uh, we're not skate park designers. This is the perfect example of a project that should be led by skate park designers. And so we found that we were able to lend our skills with the city to help craft the RFP that eventually brought a skate park designer on board, um, bring local experience. We're also working on the Ventura River Trail project, which is right adjacent to this right now. Um, and so that's kind of our role. We're kind of this middle person helping the city with the community. We have great community engagement presence, um, as well as helping Matt navigate through the city, helping be this kind of intermediary having been here and done it. Um, other things I want to mention is you, the community, are extremely important. And in that, a subset of the community, West, the West Park Expansion Steering Team, um, several members are here tonight, have been a community or organized group to kind of help be your voice direct to. They were integral in the RFP stage. They helped craft some of the RFP and sit on the review. West, I see a couple members. I see Brandon. Um, oh, there's Mike just popped in. Angel's here somewhere too. So a few members of that. Use these guys as your voice. If you feel like something you know isn't being heard here tonight, these guys are a, a, a direct conduit to the project team. So they're like community plus. Think of it as that. They're, they're your conduit to us and the city and, uh, and to Matt. Um, 
So I just hope that kind of above this is the grantor, California State Parks. The city has to report to the grantor. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Stacy mentioned a little bit of the timeline of the grant. I just want to give a brief overview of that. She mentioned back in 2019, the city applied for the first round of the grant, um, but was unsuccessful. It's an extremely competitive grant. But the second round, round four, or the fourth round of that specific grant, the second time they applied were awarded in 2022. Um, the current skate bar, there's no dates on here, I realize, but it, that was back in the early 90s, long timeline here. So a little bit about the grant, just so you guys understand that this grant isn't just about a skate park, right? What you're gonna see is a, a large skate park, but in order to get this grant, this specific grant had other um, factors that in order for a project to be competitive, it had to kind of attach onto it. So things like, uh, one of the big things is people ask why West Park, um, why the West Side? Grants, especially anymore, are often tied to critically underserved communities. And so that helps a grant score, it's one of the, only only one of the reasons West Park was identified, um, but it did make this grant more competitive. Um, utilizing community-based planning, as Stacy mentioned, uh, the seven meetings back, this is the 10th public meeting for this uh, tonight, is the 10th public meeting for this project. It's very important to the grantor of the state that your voice, the community, is embedded in the design of this project. This isn't a top-down approach. In fact, this grant flips that on its head and makes sure that the projects that come out of it are ones that come from the community, not from administrators, not from whatever. So just know that. Um, that it provides employment or volunteer opportunities, which is a little bit of a nuance there. I could get into details if someone has questions. Developing community partnerships. Another big one is utilizing sustainable environmental design principles. There's certain commitments, including planting trees, um, low water use irrigation for those trees, that this grant had to kind of attach on to it to try and get some points in that regard to the grant so that it doesn't look like it's just a big sea of concrete to the grantor and therefore get some points to eventually get award. These are all the reasons why this project was successful in getting the $2 million. And if anybody has any questions on this, I'm happy to help answer later. As mentioned, once the grant was awarded, the city had identified this as the opportunity for a design build. And there's no perfect, better way to do a or better project case scenario than a skate park for design build like this. Skate park companies like Matt, they are true artists and engineers and designers, but they're also craftsmen in the way they can construct projects. Design build is a, is a kind of a nuance in uh, in public works contracting. Most projects in, in jurisdictions go through a process called design bid build, where a company like mine would design it, then a, it would get bid out by contractors and they would build it, but we're not the builders, right? But skate parks are completely different in that regard. And this is new to the city of Ventura as of last year. The city just passed an ordinance and this is the first project that is ever gonna be done per that design build ordinance. Um, the, the, the process then went through a request for proposals, which is a competitive process. The city put that out in July. Um, it's a long process, obviously. It was a two-phase request for proposals where uh, interested parties uh, submitted their qualifications first, and then those, those were narrowed down to a group of finalists that then submitted the second phase, including Matt's company, which included design scenarios, uh, design concepts, of which you're kind of looking at tonight uh, before getting finally selected. Um, that also included contractual language, uh, a, essentially a bid to build it already so that, that we can ensure the project's going to be done within the budget that's allowed. One of the things about this process, if you were, some of you may have been able to attend, we held a couple of meetings back in earlier in uh, 2022, I guess it is, times of warp these days, in 2022 to ask you what was important. Those criteria that you helped us develop were important and, and got embedded into that RFP, which is what helped evaluate the companies that all proposed and then eventually chose Grindline out of that. Lastly, I just want to mention where we're at in the overall process about this. It kind of, if you did attend those meetings, mentioned where we were at, we were at number two. We've completed one and two, we're now in three. We're in the preliminary design and community engagement phase. Um, this is going to be one of two meetings. Uh, this is the first of two meetings where we're going to go over design stuff. Matt's going to come back and present again based on the feedback he hears tonight and where the design goes after this evening. Um, and then it's it kind of like, you know, it was what, last a year ago that we met? kind of went into this dark, what, what felt like was a dark period for the RFP. Stuff was going on that whole time. It took us seven months to get through RFP. The other part that's going to kind of disappear from the community's eyes a little bit is when it goes into the construction and permit drawings. Matt's going to go to work making sure he can figure out how to build this thing for cost. We're not going to have a lot of community engagement in that. And then all of a sudden, 
there's going to be equipment on the site. Uh, and that's scheduled. Matt's going to go over a little bit of the schedule when that's going to happen per our thing right now. But uh, uh, it's tentative. He's working through some stuff as that's again. But then we'll get into the bid construction and open the skate park after that. Lastly, I just want to put this out there before I hand it off to Matt that as we're going through this process, um, PCLD is helping manage the website, which is westparkskatepark.com. Use that as a repository for information. There's an email associated with that. It's a, one of the fastest ways to get in touch with us. Um, advertisements for new meetings will come from that as well as from city sources as well. So keep checking back in there. The date on the second meeting has not been set yet, but we're working to, to define that as soon as possible. So with that, I want to hand it over to Matt. And like I said, I want to get out of the way and let Matt do the talking. So. Yeah, so I'm Matt uh, Fliggy, CEO at Grind Landscape Parks. Um, I've been with the company just just a few months shy of 20 years now, so a few hundred skate park projects. Um, and basically tonight we're just going to tell you guys a little bit about us, um, talk about the process so you guys understand this, all the steps that we're going to have to take to get from here to a finished skate park show you guys a few examples of some of our work, and then we're gonna kind of break off and, and get into more of an informal discussion about the concept that we included in our proposal. Um, but I just wanna stress that this, this concept is just an example or you know, a conversation starter. Um, it's based on some of the previous uh, community input that was given, but we definitely wanna hear what you guys have to say about it, you know, whether you like it, what you like, what you don't, maybe you hate the whole thing, wanna start over. Like, we're down for whatever. Um, so with that, we'll just uh, I'll go ahead and talk about us for a minute. I feel like, you know, over the years, we've kind of designed um, just about every type of skate terrain you can think of, you know, whether it's uh, large bowls shaped in the state of Texas with full pipes in the middle or incorporating rocks and things like that that we find on site during excavation. Um, and incorporating those into the skate park construction, skate park art projects. This is the one we did bacon and eggs up in Washington State. This is a powerhouse skate park in Jamestown as the birthplace of the Crescent Wrench. So you can see this uh, Crescent Wrench extension up here, um, incorporating LED lighting into projects. Um, you know, this, this over here is Wenatchee, Washington, the, the Apple capital of, I, think the world they claim or whatever, but uh, Apple Bowl there. Um, this is Payne's Park in Philadelphia where it's more of a kind of plaza style park um, and it kind of starts centrally as a skate park and it, as it works its way out, um, becomes more of like a multi-use gathering space uh, type of passive park. Um, so as far as our design philosophy, three-pronged philosophy, uh, one is organic flow. Um, and that's basically how we, like, when we design a park, how we, the spatial relationships, the heights, the depths, um, set up landing zones, stuff like that, you know, how, how we lay that out, how we take all your guys' ideas and put them together into one cohesive design that works for everybody. Um, ladder of progression, so what that means is basically we don't like to design parks with segregated areas. Like this is the beginner section and this is the advanced section over here. We like to design all types of terrain, whether it's large or small, that are fun for all ages and abilities. And then integration uh, and context. So that's how the park fits in with its current existing surroundings. We want this park to look like either it was always there or always should have been there. Um, and also, are we, gonna, you know, are we doing anything in the design to celebrate local identity? We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, again, just some different examples, uh, you know, kind of incorporating our philosophy. And a lot of this is just showing how parks kind of fit into, their, uh, into the existing and new environment, you know, softening them through landscaping and, and things like that. And that's part of this grant requirement for this project is going to be doing green um, stormwater design and stuff. So we have to incorporate that into like a skatable scenario. Um, just a little bit more on uh, local, local identity. Um, got this park here we did in Hana, uh, Hawaii, where 
We did the skatable volcanoes to sort of replicate the, the volcanoes throughout the Hawaiian Islands. Um, this is a park we did in Burlington, Vermont, which is right next to Lake Mayfield, a huge uh, sailing community. So you got the concrete sail here with the Vermont-shaped manual pad in the foreground. Um, Texas, you know, they like everything big and bold and literal, so we did uh, what I showed you earlier, the, the kind of Texas-shaped bowl with the full pipe, and you got the, the Texas star here in the middle of the street plaza, um, and then again, incorporating rocks that we've found on site into the, into the design and construction, and utilizing public artists to, um, you know, paint some of the non-skatable surfaces, like the vertical surfaces of ledges and stuff like that. And now just kind of go over the, the process real quick. So like when we start a project, um, there'll be specific project goals, and that usually gets incorporated into the RFP that's, that's the request for proposal or whatnot. We'll go over that, those real quick. Then we do site visit and site analysis. So we've already started that process, and that's where we go check out the site. Um, we do like, sur we survey the exi existing conditions and do a geotech investigation and report, which is basically digging deep holes in the, in the dirt and identifying the soils and where the water table's at so we know how, how far down we can go with any, any type of bowls or anything like that. Um, then conceptual design, so we're kind of in that process right now. Um, cost estimating, that's a step we basically do throughout the entire design so we know that we're on target to build what we're showing you guys. Um, construction documents and permitting, so those are the final working drawings like the blueprints that um, the field crew will use to build the park and also getting through any permitting requirements with the city. And then construction and then the grand opening. So go uh, through those a little bit more. Um, so as far as the goals, um, already talked a little bit about the SPP grant and meeting those requirements. Um, and uh, the city wants to use the community um, engagement that's, that's already happened for that grant in the past, and that's kind of what we use to create the initial concept here but we wanna continue that process, which we're doing tonight, and get more feedback um, from your thoughts on the concept and which direction you want us to go in. <coughs> Design and construction creativity within the limits of the budget and schedule. Um, so that's kind of what part of, I guess, the reason Grindline got selected was that was all included in our proposal. Um, aesthetically attractive, functional, cost-effective, and practical project, which is pretty much our goal with every park we do. Um, renovate the existing park out there. And as far as what that means, um, we're open to suggestions. Um, we, our, our proposal is actually to kind of redo the bowl in a similar shape, but do it right with like correct transitions and coping and like, um, but in, in the interview process, we heard back from um, some of the West folks that, um, Maybe there's some nostalgia for that old bowl, and, and, and it's wacky, and people have learned how to skate it and keep the bowl, and instead um, renovate the area around it. So demo everything outside of the, the bowl's edge and do like a fun like skate track in that zone or something. So um, we want to know what you guys want to do with it. And site analysis, I mean, we're right by the site here. I, you guys have obviously all been there. Um, so we got a pretty open area. Um, oh, my cursor's not gonna work on white very good, but kind of this whole big rectangle next to the park and then all the, this area around the circle here. Um, that's, you can kind of see it in the, in the concept or whatever, but we've got a good size open area there, about 22,000 square feet um, in addition to the existing area. And then community input, um, which is what we're doing tonight again. So what we're gonna do is take your guys' feedback and go back to Grindline headquarters and basically either revise this design, start over, um, or maybe you think it's perfect and we just move right into construction documents, but uh, we'll see what happens tonight. And then again, we've created the initial concept and um, 
we'll either revise or redo and come back down here and present the new concept to you guys and get more feedback. And then just, I mentioned construction documents. This is just an example of a set of plans for a project. I think this was for Payne's Park in Philly. And construction, which is actually the easy part of this whole process. Uh, so you see just various stages of construction there. Up, up top left, you got mass excavation and s some top forms, underground drainage to the right of that. Um, steel coping, formwork and rebar, and then concrete, or shot create and concrete uh, placement and finishing. And then it's time to party. Grand opening, we like to be involved with the grand opening and, and this is where we you know, officially turn the park over to you guys. And now I'm just gonna show you guys just a couple um, project examples. It's a little video of the um, <coughs> Spring Park, actually now called North Houston Skate Park, um, 78,000 square feet. This was definitely a fun one to work on. It's got, you know, an, a big enough canvas to basically do like a little bit of everything. And this one's not in here to tease you guys, it's just because it's a good one, because it's got a little bit of everything. Um, but yeah, real fun project. I probably won't let this whole thing play out just so we can kind of move on and get into discussions. What was the build cost on that? Our piece, which was just the specialty skate park work, so basically everything within the skate park concrete, I think was like, uh, like four and a half million. Today it would probably be like nine and a half million. Okay, let's move on. Oops. This is uh, Rhodes skate park up in Boise, 35,000 square feet. This was a fun one because we got to build it underneath an overpass. It was also a challenging project because it was a um, contract with a private foundation in partnership with the city on county land, county owned land leased to the city, and then the DOT owned the overpass over the top. So. Riverside Skate Park in Detroit. Um, this was a super fun one. It's right down on the waterfront in this like huge park that they're revitalizing. Like when we when I went down there when the project started, it was insane. It was like the it was like the Walking Dead. Like there were weeds like it, it coming out of the asphalt that were like seven feet tall, and it was crazy. But really fun project, mostly street terrain and. We kind of uh, played off of a couple of the local iconic spots out there in Detroit. Uh, Vista. Um, so Vista was kind of a little bit of a different animal. They actually had two sites that were a block away from each other, each 10,000 square feet. And this particular project, they specifically wanted to have like a transition park and a street park. So. Um, you know, we like to mix it up, but ultimately we do whatever the client says. So um, that's what we did here, but there was a lot of non-skate park stuff involved. Like we had to install a traffic signal and a bunch of alley improvements, median fencing. Um, but pretty, pretty good uh, couple of parks if you guys are ever down that way. This is Alex Road in, in Oceanside. So in Oceanside we did um, we did a three park, yeah, also known as uh, Prince Park. Um, we did a three park system for the city of Oceanside where we designed two smaller ones, built those kind of as a phase one, and then this one went out to bid um, later on. And this one was actually, we designed it and did construction admin and California Skate Parks built it, which kind of hurt. Um, 
St. Helena, uh, 17,000 square feet. This is a good mix of, you know, you got kind of a bigger flow bowl than a pool style bowl and, and street terrain surrounding that. Good mix. This is uh, Salida, Colorado. Um, just a good example of like integration and we had to um, design and build this thing around a bunch of massive existing trees in a pretty uh, highly used city park with an aquatic center and all that stuff. So, um, I mean, obviously the grass hasn't taken in this picture, but got it to blend in pretty well. Uh, Salida's also known as the heart of the Rockies. So like this little flow bowl's got a heart-shaped island in the center of it, you know, with um, red concrete. This is Star Idaho. Um, I really like this park design because there's, it's not like, there's not like a bowl, a, you know, quintessential bowl or anything like that, or like a street zone. It's all like blended terrain together. Super good mix of terrain and like really fun for just about everybody. This is uh, North Bend, Washington. So, you know, another good example of a little bit smaller park, but still something with everything, a street course, pretty good size flow bowl, and then, a, you know, more like a pool style bowl. It's hard to tell on this projector, but, um, well, also in the photo, but th there's uh, this big, like, kind of rock, um, big basalt formation called Mount Sai sits behind it, so we tried to, like, play off of the different colors of the basalt and did uh, different integral colored concrete throughout the park to like match it. Totally not showed well in that photo, but you guys will just have to go up there and skate it. This is Tibbetts and Issaquah. And I'm, I included this one because this is kind of was one of, was our thoughts of like possibility of uh, public art incorporation. And like I mentioned earlier, doing some, um, some mural type stuff on the vertical, non-skatable pieces to kind of just make it pop 3D wise and uh, yeah, just get, just kind of give it its own identity. So I'll quickly just kind of go through these shots. Um, and again, this is just like a starting point conversa conversation starter. So we want to get your guys' feedback on uh, what you guys want to see in your park. Um, and I also, like, we'll, we're gonna break into groups here and just give you guys some post-it notes so you guys can go up there, write on your notes, you know, I like this, or put, put this here instead, or whatever, or I don't like this. Um, and I'll be, try to be in the middle and kind of hopping around as well so I can hopefully talk to everybody. Um, but yeah, I'll just kind of go through these. And then I also have the actual, model on here so if like anybody once we're in these groups if people want specific dimensions and heights depths stuff like that we can pull them right off of the model yes overall park here a couple different views again this was our kind of original idea with the existing spot Snake Run was a big, um, a big one on the list from the previous community input. You got a just kind of amoeba-shaped bowl here, but definitely open to different shapes. It's kind of the main street zone. So just a heads up that we have to um, be able to provide emergency vehicle access into the park. So that's why this. Um, there's kind of this open zone right here. So some, it doesn't have to be right there. It probably, it's kind of where it made the most sense to us, but there needs to be access maintained at some spot. Shot from the other side. Um, and this is actually, so there's a, there's like a drainage ditch with a culvert um, at the edge of like the walking path. And our idea was to extend the culvert and basically kind of build skateable terrain to accommodate that, so that's why this kind of hump came into play here. Um, next step, so like I said, we're gonna take all of your guys' feedback, um, come up with the revised design, come back down here and present it, um, and then refine the concept for final approval in April, and it's gonna take us 
from there till November to get through all the construction documents, submittals, um, and permitting and all that sort of thing. It's definitely a time consuming process, that portion of the design. And then start construction in November. And the, the goal is to, ha to have this thing done and turn over to the city by June of 24. So that's the schedule as it stands now. Um, before we break into groups, any, does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm, I'm partnering with the school district to do these like uh, bike kind of competition things. I, I do this nonprofit called Bike for a Cause. Uh -huh. And I was thinking about like extending that to do like a skate for a cause kind of thing, like uh, doing like competitions basically. Mm. And so like my like main, I guess, vision that I'd like to input is like having some sort of seating or bleachers or some sort of like announcement area or something like that. Okay. Like we could really like ramp up and encourage kids to get active and healthy with, you know, competitions and events, you know, maybe even like a stage for a band or something cool like that, you know? Okay. So, cool. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, I like the, one of those events had a lot of that, uh, you know, kind of community integration. You know, you don't want people standing around at the skate park anyways, you know what I mean? So yeah. Give them somewhere to stand so they're not like in the way. Yeah, for sure. Make sure you put a do a little sticky on there about that stuff. I think there should be like more stair sets. More stair sets. Okay. All right. Make sure you do a sticky note. Yeah, I just want to clarify. Right yeah. now, if you have any questions about the presentation or process, put them down. But as far as specific advice, we're going to break out to the boards here and get your feedback on specific things like more stairs or community viewing areas. So, yeah, any other general questions? Never mind. We can talk one on one after this. No, I think the intention is to design with what we got, so we're not stalled out. We're designing to the budget. Exactly. And what you see can be designed to the budget. <laughs> Next question. Any others? Oh. The, the emergency, it's actually a need because Park Row is a dead end street to handle emergency vehicles to turn around. And so it's a little bit of a need to provide what we're calling a hammerhead turn in the street there a little bit so that there's a spatial setback that he's designing around. around. We have 45 minutes allotted, but I don't know if there's a hard out. But we're here to hear you and ga gain your advice so, or in input. There's going to be three different boards set up here, uh, people manning them. So if you can't put it on, someone will listen to you, write down, take, we'll, we'll be taking notes as well. Um, but yeah, sticky notes to put on design. There's going to be people there to listen to you as well. So. Yes. And the seven previous. And the, keep in mind that this is one of seven meetings that have happened already that led to this point. And all of that has, was provided to Matt to get to what you see here tonight. So. And, and yeah, and there, there's also a questionnaire that if you haven't filled out, that'll be information that's important to Matt as well. Thanks. Is there an email to uh, yes, there is. The, uh, the best one to get direct to is info at westparkskatepark.com. Um, that will be routed directly to the design team. So, um, and westparkskatepark.com is a great just informational website to keep up to date for when that meeting does get scheduled or just general progress updates. And, and sign up for the, the, the newsletter that comes out of that. If you were, you got a blast today that said meeting tonight. So. Uh, 
Um, it's a, he can speak more, I think, to the percentages, but. Yeah, I mean, I'd say right now, the way we have it set up is probably landscaping and non-skatable stuff is probably around like 10 to 15% of the, the budget total. And one thing to kind of keep in mind of that is, again, as I kind of mentioned, is you don't get the skate park without those other things because you don't get the grant unless you pitch those other things. So, yeah. Can we get rid of the palm trees and that other kind of trees to provide shade? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> He's coming from Washington. He, he wants to put palm trees in. We only get to throw them in on certain <laughs> concepts, so, but we can change them. No problem. Do you have any idea how deep the hole is, let's say, wherever on that land? Can, can, can we the, keep, I'm sorry, can we keep talking down for just a little bit so people can ask questions and be the heard? In, the enclosed bowl? Probably, we'd probably be looking at like around 9, 10, something like that. I mean, 9 seems pretty good. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just getting old. All right. All right. Should we do? Oh, yeah. There is going to be lighting. Lighting is included in the budget. <laughs>